The President, please be seated. The court is now back in session. And I hand over to the prosecution to resume his line of questioning. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President, and good afternoon, Your Honours, and good afternoon, Merci, Professor Chandler. We were discussing before the break the classifications of the population post April 1975 and the ways in which um, uh, you have discussed the treatment of these, of these people. Now, continuing on from that point, what I would like to discuss next is your analysis of the four-year plan of the regime, which, uh, of course, uh, is uh, discussed or reproduced in the book that Judge Cartwright referred to yesterday, your, your, uh, the book you co-edited uh, entitled Pol Pot's, Pol Pot Plans the Future. Um, what I would like to look at now is, uh, as, I, as I said, your analysis of that plan and some of the conclusions that you, that you draw. And just for everyone's benefit, this is uh, the, the analysis of this plan. Um, uh, is contained in the book Brother Number One, which is E3 slash 117. Um, and it is also uh, contained in Professor Chandler's other books, um, including A History of Cambodia, um, which is the book I wish to um, look at now. Professor Chandler, um, if you could. Go to pages 214 to 216 of the book, and I'll read out the relevant ERNs. The Khmer ERN is 00679175277. The English ERN is 00422. 0042 um, in brother number one you um, indicate that the plan was uh, introduced by Pol Pot in August but here uh, we move into um, a, uh, the contents of the plan if you like your your views uh, and analysis of the contents. So at, the, at those ERNs in A History of Cambodia, you say the following. It called for the collectivization of all Cambodian property and proposed ever increasing levels of rice production throughout the country with the aim of achieving an average national yield of three metric tons per hectare, or 1.4 ton per, per acre. The pre-revolutionary average harvested under less stringent conditions and with monetary incentives had been less than a ton per hectare, one of the lowest in Southeast Asia. A few lines below that, you state the following. The plan had been hastily written 
There was no time to conduct studies to see if its proposals were appropriate to soil and water conditions in particular areas, or if the infrastructure needed for other programs was in place. Instead, the plan called for an quote, all-out storming offensive, end quote, by all the people. Um, and two more brief passages uh, continuing on in the same text. So just further down, quote, no material incentives were offered the Cambodian people except the bizarre promise that everyone would enjoy dessert on a daily basis by 1980, exclamation mark. A little bit further down again, where you talk about the concept of accomplishing this swiftly. I quote, in explaining the plan to high-ranking members of the party, an unnamed spokesman, presumably Pol Pot, stated that the plan could be accomplished swiftly. The, t the DK revolution, after all, was a new experience an important one for the whole world because we don't perform like others. And this here is quoting the language uh, of the regime. We leap directly to a socialist revolution and swiftly build socialism. We don't need a long period of time for transformation. Could I ask you to um, expand briefly on your conclusion that there was no time to collect, to conduct studies, that no studies were conducted, and that instead the plan uh, called for, a, for an all-out storming offensive by the people. Well, the, the plan, like many other policies uh, set in place in uh, <coughs> democratic Cambodia well, uh, sprang from foregone conclusions rather than any uh, examination of possibilities or potentialities of, of the uh, policy uh, taking effect. <coughs> I mean, just as they, no, neither be. But at the beginning of the, the introductory paragraph to the plan is our, 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 the explanation, which you haven't cited, the Pope Paul says, in a kind of typical, I think rather typical DK fashion, uh, why do we need the plan? Because we need the plan. His answer is we need it because we need it. No question of discussion or anybody said we don't need one, whatever. We need it immediately. Another reason he didn't mention, of course, is we need it because this is what revolutionary regimes do when they come to power, they set in motion plans. Usually after a while, not, not immediately, not, not within a, uh, this is within, well, the plan was supposed to come in about a year and a bit after coming to power. It was drawn up much less, much earlier than that. Uh, <coughs> drawn up from, as I say, wishful thinking and foregone conclusions about the way things had to occur in uh, DK under the leadership of the, uh, under what they call the clairvoyant leadership of the uh, CPK. Um, I think they were imitating, with, they never cite the, uh, the models they're copying. As a matter of fact, the three tons per hectare, I found out, I, I stumbled across when I was uh, writing the Voice from S21, turned out to have been a policy introduced in a, one of the model areas of China in the early 1970s to the same point of done with Mu instead of hectare, but it comes out to the same. So it was a, a model that came from China. So did the phrase, the, the uh, great leap forward they used a lot came from China without saying that it did. But the idea that <coughs> Cambodia's riches were in agriculture was true, uh, that its potential uh, lay, at least the way they could see it at the time, not being too certain, for example, of the oil deposits, which have only been guaranteed very recently, uh, that agriculture would in the future be the source of income for Cambodia. The plan, in a, in a way, makes a kind of, a, kind of sense. What it doesn't do, of course, as I've tried to say uh, before, and uh, it doesn't take consideration for what was actually going on in 75 and 76, just as it doesn't pay attention to the failure of the Great Leap Forward or, or such other events outside of Cambodia. It's built on hope. It's built on the assumption that the liberated energies of the poor uh, 
as it were, taking a lid off the, uh, 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 the press, uh, press lives that they allegedly have been leaving would be enough to uh, fuel, uh, to, to be the, the uh, fuel the engine of the revolution and produce these uh, targets. I think the, uh, there's lots of things in the, in the plan that can be talked about, uh, uh, such as they were going to get, uh, if, they, if we have oil, we will find it, stuff like that. The main thing was to impose a, a dream, really, a, a dream onto the Cambodian people of this kind of level of production. It's, of course, complete uh, speculation, which is uh, you know, off, off, off base a bit, but had the target been set at two tons per hectare, quite a lot more success might have been achieved. Three was, three was out, out, of, out of reach. Papa didn't think so, but it turned out to be completely out of reach for most of the country. And briefly, could you, uh, because we're discussing here the speech, uh, attributed by you to Pol Pot. Um, could you tell us if you have been able to conclude um, which body, or, or whether it was an individual or a group of people, um, issued the plan? I'd have to recheck the text of what I, what, I, what I said at the time. It certainly wasn't a document originating from Pol Pot personally. It, was, it, it emerged from the party leadership. It was a, I think it was a composite, uh, composite draft. There were some, uh, some writers have suggested that parts of it were written by Q. Sampan, but I'm not saying that. It was written by, it's collectively written, certainly, uh, collectively approved, uh, coming out of the collective leadership. Uh, and it was a... Again, you never get a single, a single signature on any DK documents, <laughs> but only the leader can explain and only the leader has had the final word. So uh, it comes out of this collective mentality, collective leadership, uh, which must be centered at some point in the Central Committee, but we don't have that specific information. <coughs> Thank you. And as far as you have been able to glean, um, how was, well, first of all, was that plan vous, communicated to uh, people who would then implement it? Comment est-ce que ce plan était communiqué à ceux qui devaient le mettre en œuvre? No, as far as we know, it, it was not. It was never, never put into effect. The uh, reason why it was not put into effect is uh, the specific reason is not known, but it. it I, suggested it's connected with the sort of tidal shunt that took place in the Je Cambodian Communist Party toward the end of 1976, uh, September, October, in that area, in that period of, the, of, their, of their rule. Uh, it was withdrawn from, uh, it was never widely circulated, and it was withdrawn from, uh, from uh, execution, although the slogan three tons per hectare continued through the regime, through the end of the regime. Um, the, uh, let me just think what I was thinking. Um, no, let's go ahead. I'm sorry. Thank you. In, in so far as the three ton per hectare slogan continued to be used, did it have any uh, effect on the implementation of uh, policies and practices throughout the country. An effect sur la mise en œuvre de politique et de pratique dans le pays. Well, I, I think certainly it, it certainly Je frightened pense. people. It frightened the people who were who were supposed oui, to carry it out. These would be the uh, cadre district and sector and zone leaders in the countryside who had to produce these these uh, targets. Uh, to what extent they actually produced the targets, we don't know. The information, at least I don't think the information is available. It wasn't available to me at the, when I wrote the book. But <coughs> there's quite a lot of evidence that in order to get even close to the targets, they cut back on the amounts of rice that were supposed to be set aside for seeds and for feeding the population in order to deliver a sufficient amount up, up the line. And as I said, uh, in one of somewhere, I just was reviewing it yesterday, um, the... There's an irony uh, uh, tied in with the whole idea of self Cambodian self-sufficiency and not failure to rely on foreign aid. It's ironic that several hundred thousand tons of rice were exported to China at this time to pay them for the unacknowledged aid that they were giving. In other words, the Cambodians are trying to show that they were producing surpluses when they weren't to the Chinese as a matter of uh, fraternal solidarity and so on. Uh, <coughs> all over the country and all kinds of evidence you get 
you have evidence of Partout food supply pays, going down, nutrition going down, preuves, uh, starvation uh, coming up, uh, deaths la, from malnutrition uh, going up, all connected, I think, to the kind of uh, scare qualities of this three-ton target. It was, it, was a, it was a target that was just always stressed and never denied, and it was too much to make, too much for the people to produce. Now, moving on to um, one particular region that you looked at, um, passer à une région uh, spécifique que vous this avez is now étudié. brother number one. Um, je me réfère à frère numéro un. And the relevant ERNs in Khmer, 0082 1782. Professor Chandler, if you're looking at the hard copy, it should be page Professor 117 Chandler, il de la page of brother number one. Uh, or ERN in English, 0393031031. Have you been able to find that passage? It should end with... Oh, I will read it. I will read it. Quote, most of the work in the Northwest would be done by more than one million April 17 people who had been evacuated from Phnom Penh and from the city of Batambang into rural areas in the zone. Over the next two years, these men and women were forced to hack rice fields, canals, dams and villages out of malarial forests. Tens of thousands of them died from malnutrition, disease, executions, and overwork. These deaths, when they became known, distressed the authorities in Phnom Penh only to the extent that they indicated that, quote, enemies, end quote, were at work behind the scenes. New people, because they were so numerous, end quote, class enemies, end quote, of the revolution were expendable. Many survivors recall a chilling aphorism directed mockingly at them by cadre. Quote, keeping you is no gain, losing you is no loss. End of quote. À vous garder, on ne gagne, on ne gagne rien. À vous perdre, on ne perd rien. First of all, Professor, um, if you could Professor. tell us what evidence you looked at in arriving at the conclusions of tens of thousands Quels of deaths um, in this particular region. One of the main uh, sources for information about the uh, conditions in the Northwest were uh, refugee testimonies after the war. Uh, a large number of the refugees who got into Thailand came from that area, and <coughs> many of them, as new people, were um, educated uh, uh, to a certain level where they would find themselves in a position to give detailed and articulate uh, uh, descriptions of what had happened. Uh, <coughs> The casualty figures are uh, taken from a couple of uh, books, uh, which are just estimates. There are no formal uh, uh, estimates of the casualties under DK in, in these different zones. One of the points of the Northwest, as well as being filled with uh, new people, was it was not an area that had been under systematic uh, Khmer Rouge control during the Civil War. This meant that uh, there were not as many well-trained or competent or screened, whatever word you want to use, uh, local cadre to handle the population, a situation very different in the Southwest, different in large parts of the East, in the Northeast, and even in some of the areas around uh, Phnom Penh in the center and north of the country. This was a frontier to which uh, new people have been sent and also cadre often with no 
connection to this part of the country. It's very important because in a great many parts of the country, the Khmer Rouge leaders of a local area would be from that local area. And this doesn't mean that they'd be uh, especially uh, just or, or, uh, or soft, but they knew conditions, they knew, they knew people to work with, they could gather. In the Northwest, where Kadri, who had not come from there, uh, who had little experience in administering, uh, and were then, once you've expended, if you like, enough of the uh, new people, uh, the regime decided that these were the enemies, really, not the unproductive new people, but the cadre that had been sent there to run the show were the, the ones who wrecked it. This all comes from the um, absolute se the, the, the sense that the Communist Party has, has the soul has monopoly over, over the truth. In other words, it can never be uh, wrong. Therefore, there's no question of saying from the center, oh, that policy was wrong. Therefore, we must change the policy. No, the policy was right. So there has to be some other reason for its failure as opposed to its intrinsic shortcomings. And these were exactly the same uh, strategies followed by Stalin. These were blamed on wreckers and various people who just couldn't do the right thing. And where you uh, uh, discuss the, the movement by, of more than one million people, April 17 people, um, from Phnom Penh to that region, um, have you been able to um, ascertain whether that was a result of, um, or rather I'll, I'll put my questions differently, uh, have you been able to uh, ascertain uh, which decision or decisions um, led to that particular movement? Without the precision, that might be helpful if I had the sources right in front of me, but the, the, the passage suggests that the new people, suggests mistakenly that the new people evacuated the Northwest had been sent there from Phnom Penh. No, these were people who evacuated from Phnom Penh to various places and then gathered up at the beginning of 76 and sent up to the northwest by truck and train and sort of on foot. This is called the second evacuation. It's, it's called that. It's in all the, in the literature. So very few of the new people, well, I'll correct that. New people from Batabang, which are a reasonably Cambodian second city, were all evacuated into the northwest. So this situation began to occur and a refugee I spoke to in 76 who'd fled then uh, in, the, in the optimistic period uh, was one of several hundred who jumped off out of the Northwest quickly when it was starting to new people. And these formed the basis for the uh, first interviews with refugees. But anyway, most of these people were went to provinces near Phnom Penh where they had relatives because most people in Phnom Penh in those days either had come from these regions anyway or had relatives in them. So they would be in the southwest, the east, the south, uh, no, there is no south, the east and the, and the center. But they were gathered up to go, once this plan is starting to get thought up, they're gathered up and moved into the northwest as a, well, as a, you can call it a slave labor force or just a, uh, cutting edge, anywhere you want to use. These are the people who had to do the work. There weren't enough people up there to achieve this three tons per hectare. Where were the extra people? Well, were the city people, obviously. And up they went to the northwest. So the phrasing, evacuated from Phnom in, in the paragraph, there's not really, I wrote it, but it's not, not exactly right. <coughs> And just to, to, for the avoidance of any doubt, you, you described that uh, coordinated or that movement of people from a number of regions in early 1976. Um, where did that decision emanate from? If there was a decision, um, Oh, it emanated right from, from the party center. This was, it was connected with the whole uh, policy plan to, that ended up producing this four-year plan. This was all part of their strategy. It was not uh, decided. Nothing of this dimension was ever ad hoc in Cambodia. It was always right from the top.
aucune décision Thank you. De, and ce, de cet lastly, emploi on, au Cambodge on this, uh, passage, euh, um, n'était ponctuel. Cela provenait toujours du haut. You've indicated that um, you interviewed survivors and some of this information is, is based on those interviews. Um, are you able to, to expand on vos this sont basées en partie uh, aphorism, sur keeping you is no gain, losing you is no loss, à vous garder, how that was à vous perdre, applied, nous ne perdons rien. Applied, what, what effect, Comment est-ce que cette practice? phrase était appliquée et quel effet a-t-il eu en pratique The effect it had in practice was to scare the people to whom it was directed, and this was the purpose of it. Uh, uh, it was quoted so often, quite early on in the people starting research on the Khmer Rouge in 80-81 with survivors and with people living inside the country, still living inside uh, Cambodia after the uh, collapse of the Khmer Rouge. So widespread, this was just almost a slogan for the... What do we tell the new people? Tell them this. I mean, there's, there's no, no evidence of that order, but, but this came all over the country. People had this slogan. It was in their ears. It, it meant, or it rang in their ears, you are worthless. But if you want to survive, just work extremely hard, and we'll decide from day to day what happens to you. It's, it's a terrifying slogan. And it's, uh, uh, it was very, very widespread. I heard, it, I heard it myself many, many times from, from survivor, people, survivors of the regime. Très, très fréquemment Thank you. de la part des rescapés. L'accusation. Moving on to um, uh, the issue of um, deaths uh, or estimated uh, deaths, numbers of deaths during uh, the 1975 to 1979 period. Pendant la période 1975 à 1979. Obviously, you've studied this uh, for many years, and so there are a number of references. Vous avez étudié um, ce sujet depuis de nombreuses années, et il y a uh, de nombreuses références. Uh, je vais en mentionner deux. Of this uh, number. Concernant uh, in votre propre évaluation de ce chiffre, dans history, la tragédie de l'histoire du Cambodge. At English ERN. 00422 uh, It should be page 233. Um, uh, for this, we appear to also have a Khmer reference. There have been partial. No, I do apologize. Um, this is only available in, 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 in English. Um, I just want to check and make sure that I have the correct ERNs here. Um, so looking at tragedy, the correct ERNs, uh, I'll just read them out to make sure that we have the correct. Uh, 00193084 in English. And in Khmer, uh, it does appear that we have a Khmer, uh, except for this 00820993. Um, you, you state the following, quote, under the regime of democratic Kampuchea, a million Cambodians or one in eight died from warfare, starvation, overwork, misdiagnosed diseases and executions. That was in the tragedy of Cambodian history. Uh, you revisit the issue in a history of Cambodia. Uh, and just for the record, that was D366-7.1.1. Um, you give the following estimate. Although Vietnamese anti-DK propaganda was often heavy-handed and inaccurate, even cautious estimates of DK-related deaths caused by overwork, starvation, mistreated diseases, purges, and executions came close to two million Cambodians, or one in five. That second book was uh, is, is an addition from the year 2000, um, and there is obviously a difference in estimates. Uh, would you care to expand on how you arrived at those figures, and uh, whether you still consider the estimates uh, given in the history of Cambodia to be accurate? pour vous ces chiffres dans une histoire du Cambodge sont correct et précis. 
Uh, yes, I, I consider the later yes. estimate to be oui, my later my later estimate. I mean, uh, this is taking advantage of a lot of interesting demographic work that was done. None of it by me, but so I'm, and I'm also joining. I was given uh, just now this uh, demographic expert report. I was supposed to have that, I suppose, was I? No, if, if you don't mind, don't, don't look at that. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so just uh, didn't see it. Uh, but the point is, a consensus developed between in the early 2000s about the level of deaths drawing on these same demographic uh, sources that I had used, uh, their books and articles that I had used. So I joined the consensus not having the skills to calibrate up or calibrate down. In, con in conversations I've had since then, there are people whom I trust but don't want to just quote that now the evidence looks to be that it might be higher, it might be approaching closer to 2 million than 1.5. But I've stuck to 1517 because that's, well, I won't say received wisdom, that's a phrase, but it's what people are, are agreed on at the moment, and I'd be perfectly happy to change those figures if better information came to, came to hand. Thank you very much. Just for, uh, for everyone's benefit, uh, I, I considered um, also showing you the demographic, dem a demographic expert report, um, but in the interest of time, we'll move on. Uh, I think you've explained your conclusion, and that is sufficient for our purposes. And I thank you. Um, um, I now wish to move on to... The President, yes, Defence Council for Mr. Nunchia, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Just to make sure um, that we get the meaning of what just happened, I was not clear on uh, what document Professor Chandler wanted to uh, discuss and whether or not he had looked at the contents. His initial remarks seemed to indicate that he had. He then later said that he did not read it. I don't want to suspect any foul play, but maybe the prosecution can clarify this because, again, it's about the sources of knowledge of uh, Mr. Chandler uh, that we talk here today as well. Mr. President, I think it's a fair comment um, by my learned friend. Um, the document which was in our bundle um, and which we were considering uh, showing Mr. Professor Chandler um, is the demographic expert report, uh, which is, of course, on the case file. Uh, for the record, uh, the document number is D140-1-1. Um, and perhaps to avoid any uh, or to remove any any uh, doubt, we can ask the professor um, uh, whether. Um, well, let's just take it one step at a time. Uh, did you look at the figures in that report? Monsieur le professeur, avez-vous regardé les chiffres dans ce rapport? I mean, I was given it. I thought I could read. I was never been given anything. I wasn't supposed to read, so I don't feel I've like committed any sort of mistake, but on the other hand, I didn't examine it in detail. What I did look at, I must say, without examining everything in detail, was the end to see the conclusion, and the conclusion showed in the footnote, I think this can go on the record, this document, a consensus that had developed from a variety of sources in the, in the footnote. It cites several sources, and these would be the ones that I'm, I mentioned that I'm in agreement with. Now, if I examined the document officially, I would have had to say, you know, if it was different, I'd have to say what my own conclusion was still. It's not going to be changed by this document. What I saw was they referred to this consensus that I did refer to. So I said, you know, that's fine. That, and, and, which is 1.5 to 1.7 kind of thing, million. That's, I mean, it's an awful figure, but, yeah. and, and that's really what we're, what we're, uh, oh, okay. what we're seeking to elicit is, is your own independent uh, conclusions. Um, there was no mistake on your part, Professor Chandler. It was inadvertently given to you with, because it was at the back of another document. Um, but we have your, uh, your own conclusions, and, and that, that suffices. As I said, I wish to move on to yet another topic. Um, and it is uh, related in part to um, some of the questions that you were asked by Judge Cartwright uh, 
yesterday um, deals with, uh, broadly speaking, the uh, appointments to various bodies um, during the democratic Kampuchea regime. À différents organes pendant le régime du Kampuchea démocratique. And what I would like to uh, begin with is another quote from uh, one of your books. Uh, we're going back to brother number one. De votre livre, frère um, we un. have this uh, in Khmer, so if it could be shown on the screen, Khmer, uh, that would be appreciated. It is E3-17. The Khmer ERN is 0082177324. The English ERN is 0039302132. It's really just your your um, treatment of the relationship between the party and other bodies that I'm interested in. And this is what you said. If we could show the Khmer version on the screen, that, that would be appreciated. Quote, the party concealed by the faça facade of the revolutionary organization, in brackets, the name it had assumed among Cambodians, uh, was still officially hidden behind the National Front, with Sihanouk ostensibly the chief of state. Avec, uh, Layers of disguises, revolutionary names, and secret meetings protected, protected Salotsa from the judgment of ordinary people. Party members who had been assigned new responsibilities took up their work in secret, disguised by revolutionary names. The complex charade hid the real division of sport, whereby high-ranking members of the party carved out areas of patronage and control. Firstly, if I can ask you, Professor Chandler, um, whether you considered um, uh, internal documents, standing committee minutes and the like, which which les deal with, internes, with that period, uh, and, and I'm discussing here uh, 75, before we get to that decision we discussed yesterday. Que vous les avez à ce sujet? Yes. Yes, you, you, uh, you can assume that. Réponse. Oui, vous pouvez le tenir pour acquis. Now, Question. what you, um, Perhaps, in, in hindsight, the question was perhaps unnecessary. As we go through these passages, um, there is additional information. Um, you, you do uh, look at the October 1975 uh, standing committee minutes, and you uh, go through the minutes and you, you uh, note uh, certain appointments. Um, and I think this was this may have been discussed, so I apologize if I'm covering uh, ground that's already been covered. Um, you you uh, indicate the comrade deputy secretary, Nguyen Chia, was responsible for party organizational work and education, and Ying Sari was to handle foreign affairs for the state and the party. Q Sam Han remained as a liaison officer with the National Front, that is with and he was also given the et task of the accountancy and pricing aspects of commerce, recording de, his cabinet post in the 1960s. Qui, uh, à son poste au cabinet dans les années 60. As, as far as your research has indicated, uh, again, in part, you may have already Après answered this, but perhaps not possible que vous ayez déjà entendu cette question, um, peut-être pas entièrement. Were these roles uh, indeed performed by the accused during the DK period? Bien été exécuté par les accusés pendant la période du Kampuchea démocratique. Yes, they were. Réponse I would <coughs> alter the wording slightly of that passage Et now, with hindsight, of course. I think the phrase I used there, "carved out," is a little harsh. I think 
what they had is they had a group of people who had certain capacities. And I think they looked, in a way, I mean, this is to, I don't mean to give them a lot of credit, but it's more understandable than that phrase carved out would suggest, which would suggest just a kind of gangster group. The person with experience in foreign affairs had been Yang Siri. Nun Chia had had a lot of experience in educating party cadre. This come out in his autobiography and other places. Um, Kyusun had, had this commercial portfolio uh, that he performed very well when he was, he was a very conscientious uh, cabinet member for Sihanouk in the 60s, had knowledge of that sort of issue. So these uh, people were not picked at random. Uh, they were, this is the, I guess you can say the best and brightest. This is what they had. Uh, Ying Turret had to teach them teaching experience and she was over in that social, social affairs. Area. People got assigned. A Sun Sen had been an active combat, combatant. He's a, started life as an anthropologist, but during the Civil War, he'd shown talent as a military leader, so he was given. So I, I'm just taking back the phrase carved out because it's not really fair. It's as if it's, they did, they gave these positions at the dis, for the disadvantage of more competent people. That's not, it's, it's poorly worded. They, it's really a fairly, given the materials, it was the best they could do. So it was a set of choices. <clears throat> And moving on from that October 1975 uh, document and those decisions, um, I want to briefly go through the process of uh, adoption and promulgation of the Constitution of the Democratic Country. Uh, in other words, the, the birth of the state itself. As, as far as... Um, your research takes you, Professor, um, and considering our Après earlier recherche. discussion about the, the, the front and the existence of the front, as well as um, were those bodies active um, as at or post April 1975? Did they continue to perform any, any executive role as far as your research? Les institutions ont-elles uh, continué à s'acquitter d'un rôle exécutif? I would say almost none. There's a, a, a continuing facade. I mean, Sihanouk came down, came back to Cambodia as the so-called chief of state and was driven around an empty city and, and then was uh, told to go on a trip here and there and do these various jobs. Uh, Kyusun Pan was liaised with him and was uh, uh, played the role that he was supposed to play as being the liaison with, with uh, Sihanouk. But uh, it's pretty clear by then the game was up. I mean, Sihanouk, I said earlier, had very good social and political antennae. He could see that he was really not the chief of the state anymore. It was just a, but he had no actions that he could take. So I would say the actions that took place by the, by the ruling party between April 65 and 75, and the promulgation of the Constitution in, I think it was January 76, uh, were just done in secret and, and carried out the way they wanted to do it. It was not without, there were no laws, of course, but without any kind of uh, open discussion of what was going on. Thank you. So then looking at the, the, the process of the adoption of the Constitution, um, there are a number of uh, publicly available records and some CPK documents, so um, I'd like to, to consider uh, only a couple of them. Um, document E3 slash 273 is a foreign broadcast information service transcript of a report attributed to Mr. Kyusan on the draft of the Constitution sur, uh, that is dated the 14th of December 1975. Professor Chandler, have you, in your research, um, dans vos recherches, come across um, -vous foreign broadcast information service um, Transcripts from, from Oh, I certainly have. They're one of the major sources of internal knowledge of this, of this country to up to 78. I'm familiar with this particular one also. I, I, I remember fighting it, I think. <coughs> Thank you. Um, Your Honours, uh, if we could uh, 
Madame et Monsieur, je vous cite, il est possible donc d'afficher à l'écran ce document. Le RN en anglais est la suivante 0067 A40. En français, 0025-796-29-297. Et le français est 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 In your copy, the, the versions where the ERNs end with digits 96 and 97. Oui, document, that particular passage. La page où okay, le RN termine par 96, 97. <coughs> This uh, document uh, reports Ce document a, a, uh, on a uh, on a congress which was um, sur which was held. Uh, According to the document, at the end of April 1975, and then the, the, the events which followed that, that Congress um, suivi were ce as congrès. follows. Comme suit. This resolution of the Special National Congress is the congrès basic congrès essence of our Constitution itself. Constitution. Uh, two lines below that. De, the Special de, National Congress set up a constitutional commission in charge of preparing a written draft of the Constitution. Constitution. The Constitutional Commission of the Special National Congress then held successive meetings du to discuss the draft and finally decided on a draft Constitution, which was then submitted to thorough examination and consideration by the Council of Ministers. The Council of Ministers then submitted to the Commission its suggestions for amendments to the draft. The Mr. President, says the Council. Yes, Council, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Could the prosecutor first ask the expert whether he has seen the document before? Otherwise, it can be very confusing if we do not know whether the expert has studied this document before or not. Perhaps it didn't come through in interpretation, but the expert, in fact, indicated that he had looked at this document. If I can continue. So, thank you, Mr. President. The Council of Ministers then submitted to the Commission its suggestions for amendments to the draft Constitution so that the draft could be gradually improved. For your information, the SAMDEC Chief of State also agreed to the principles of this new Constitution. Currently, the SAMDEC is engaged in a series of visits abroad and thus cannot attend our present third national congress. Samdek Prime Minister, present here, also fully approved this constitution. This uh, report, as you can see, Professor Chandler um, describes a process by which the constitution was drafted commented upon by the Council of Ministers and ultimately submitted for approval based on your research on these processes and events does that reflect an accurate procedure process by which the Constitution came into being? I'm not at all sure that it does because I, <coughs> I would have to refresh my memory again, but I'm not aware that there was a lot of publicity about this National Congress which was uh, established in Phnom Penh. <coughs> he says the phrase Council of Ministers, I'm not sure which ministers there were where the government hadn't even been established yet. Uh, the Samdek Prime Minister, Sinuk's old Prime Minister, Pen Nuk, was there. Uh, the whole thing was 
railroaded through. I have a feeling, I guess it's only a feeling, can't prove it, that a lot of this documentary uh, bit about procedures was for overseas consumption. They, 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 DK knew that their broadcasts were being monitored and read overseas. Uh, it seems to me the, uh, this makes it sound like a very step-by-step uh, -step, uh, thing with lots of advice sought from all sorts of parties. And what we've heard all day and yesterday, this is not the CPK way of proceeding. So I have my doubts about this reflecting the reality, but again, they're just doubts. They're not anything firmer than that. Thank you. Following the adoption of the Constitution, um, the uh, documents uh, uh, which I will show you um, report on elections uh, reportedly held on the 20th of March. Uh, the next document which deals with this is E3 slash 274, and as I said, it, it is a report on the elections. Um, it's another FIBIS extract, and we can pass a copy to the professor. That would be appropriate. Thank you. Um, the relevant ERNs are Khmer 00700118, French ERN, which I understand is an incomplete translation, is 00700112, and English 00167986. Now, I don't propose to uh, go into great detail in this document um, but at those ERNs that I just read out, uh, it states the 20th March elections were successfully carried out with all of our people aged 18 years and up casting their ballots with enthusiasm. The results, the results from all polling stations throughout the country are as follows. It then proceeds to give uh, some figures and uh, I'll spare the interpreters um, Je, uh, aux going through them, but it concludes that 98% of the eligible voices participated des in the election. Again, if we can refer to your research uh, of the period, your interviews with, with survivors uh, and, and other sources Sur you looked at. Are you aware of evidence of elections being held and participated in by 98% of the population? Qui eu lieu et auquel 98% de la population euh, 98% des électeurs plutôt auraient voté? <coughs> well, <coughs> that's 90% of the eligible voters, and the new people were not allowed to vote. So this means 98% of the presumably base people, military people. I think it's inconceivable that this number of people could have voted in, a, in an election in Cambodia at this, at this stage of its communications and its stage of its infrastructure. 98% uh, uh, in, in, in the most uh, thorough elections in Cambodian history under Untak, you got up to, I think, 70%. It's 98%. I mean, so there's something very inaccurate. Of course, you have high party cadre listed as factory workers here as candidates. Another wonderful anomaly is that 520 candidates, 250 people elected. No sense of who the losers were, how the choices were made. Some people remember uh, uh, going to the election. Sihanouk himself voted. Uh, well, I mean, he, otherwise he say that he didn't, there was no election, he didn't vote, so he, he voted. Some of the areas voted. There's some, it was very spotty, but certainly it, uh, it this does not reflect uh, electoral, electoral politics were then abandoned. There was no, this was never returned. I think, again, this is largely for popular, for, for overseas consumption. It's to, it's to show that this is an orderly transition of power from the, the front organization to this new, the new uh, regime. Uh, but the elections themselves, I, I think you can't give any real credence to them, in my mind. Thank you. 
Um, L'accusation. Now, I would like to look at the document which you discussed with uh, Judge Cartwright yesterday. This is the decision of the Central Committee of the 30th of March 1976, document E3 slash 12. Um, and we have, a, we have a hard copy, Professor, um, for you, with President, with your permission. What, what we will endeavour to do is, as we go to any new document, we'll, we'll pr provide you a hard copy and hopefully uh, we'll keep track of what, what we've provided. Um, now, what I'm interested in is um, at English ERN 00182813, in Khmer, it is at 00-3140, and the same passage in French at 00-22-43-66. It is a uh, discussion uh, of the uh, establishment of state institutions, mm. and I just wish to read um, one part of it. If we could show that on the screen in Khmer, thank you. Um, the, the passage that I wish to read, Professor, is as follows. It may be difficult for you to, to follow on the screen in Khmer. Um, the true nature of our state organization at this time is different from before. Previously, the, the true nature was a front, F, not now. They are the maintenant. state organizations totally of our party. Must have all state organizations have true Tous representative characteristics with sufficient influence both in the party and in the country and outside the country. This is a political offensive as well. Does that passage uh, reflect <laughs> your understanding of the, the practice or did the practice differ um, from what is stated in this decision? No, I think that's absolutely in line with what they were doing. This is a, this is a document by the insiders about what they were doing. There's, there's no reason to lie to each other. This is, uh, this is a truth-telling document. Now, moving on to the Constitution Question. itself, and just looking at a couple of provisions, uh, we don't want to non. spend too much time on, on this. Si je vous Article 5 of the Constitution deals with legislative power, qui traite des pouvoirs législatifs. and the first sentence of that article La says, legislative power is invested in the representative assembly of the people, workers, peasants, and all other Cambodian la laborers. It mentions the number of 250 members which you referred to. The document that we looked at earlier, the report attributed to Mr. Kyu Sampan, E3-273, the report on the Constitution, states the following. The Constitution stipulates La Constitution that this law-making power should be given to the Assembly of People's Representatives, which is elected directly by the people, as indicated in Article 6. In fact, this law-making power is given to the Assembly to establish various political lines for both the internal and external policies of the country. And before I ask you uh, some questions, Professor Chandler, against the backdrop of those, of those uh, provisions and the report, if we could look at a, uh, a minute of the Standing Committee, um, this is document E3 slash 232. It is dated the 8th of March, 1976. Um, the relevant page uh, in Khmer, ERN 0017118, in English 0018263, and in French 
l'écran, si on pouvait afficher l'écran, le document en question. Thank you. Je vous remercie. Now, what I wish to um, focus on, what I wish to focus on, is a comment in this document. Que l'on s'attarde à un commentaire. Which, said, which states as follows. Quote, if anyone asks, si we must explain, not be wild and disorderly, mais ne pas do, être not, do not let it be seen that we want to suppress. At the same time, do not, do not speak playfully about the assembly in front of the people to let them see that we are deceptive. Pour voit and our assembly que is worthless. In fact, he still remains the task of the party. Cette façade, cela la Considering that provision of the Constitution, and then these comments, cette, um, donc les de professor, la Constitution. do the comments reflect the reality, or was there any uh, implementation of the Constitution as stipulated in relation to the Parliament? Réalité, un respect de la Constitution quant à l'établissement d'un Parlement Non, je veux dire, c'est un document tremendeux. Je l'ai vu une fois avant. C'est un document extraordinaire. Ne parlez pas spécifiquement sur l'un ou l'autre. Ne dites pas que cette blague n'est pas une blague. Parce que juste restez calme sur ça. Même si c'est une blague, c'est une blague. C'est ce qu'ils disent. Mais ce n'est pas une blague. 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 Overseas, it'll keep things, it'll make us look orderly and leave, allow us to proceed in the way we want to proceed. And that makes it, I think, a very typical uh, document from the top. Uh, the National Assembly, as far as we know, uh, convened once uh, and under Nunchi's uh, guidance. Now, it's hard to imagine that, uh, you know, some of these members of the Central Committee came trooping in in the clothes of their factory uniforms or their, uh, or their rubber plantation uh, gear uh, and sat there and listened to uh, I mean, the assembly consists of, there's a lot of high-ranking cadre in the National Assembly. It's hard to think that they would have trooped in with everybody else if it met. But the point is, it did meet once. We think there's some evidence that it did. Document it then adjourned. It was never brought back to, uh, never reconvened. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this document says, you know, don't worry about it. If you've heard something about it, you know, just be discreet. Don't say it, don't say it doesn't exist, don't say it's useless, don't, et cetera. Thank you. And one final um, uh, accusation. Merci. Subject on, on, on the Constitution, um, is insofar as it relates to the establishment of, of bodies, um, you have helpfully uh, referred already now to um, a, a session of the Presidium of the State of Democratic Cambodia. Um, there is a document on the case file which records a conference of the legislature of the People's Representative Assembly. This is document E3 or rather, I'll, I'll just take a step back before I show you that document. Um, I will just go back to the decision of the 30th of March, which is E3 slash 12, uh, and see, look at decisions that are reported there about certain appointments. Um, so this is E3 slash 12. Um, the relevant ERNs uh, in Khmer 00003141, in English 00182813214, and in French 00224366. To six seven. This was uh, discussed uh, by Judge Cartwright, uh, or you were asked questions by Judge Cartwright yesterday. Um, what I would like to do is, if we can show that the, the 
uh, relevant passage on the screen and just look at uh, those, those appointments or those reported appointments uh, briefly. If we could have that Khmer document on the screen, Professor, you already have a copy of, of the decision. Yeah, it's, it's ready, so the AB unit could assist us. Um, the passage uh, essentially starts with the heading, the actual organization. Um, as for the assembly, it uh, indicates the method, or rather it states, quote, the methods and regime of work as follows. Uh, one, all representatives, in fact, live with their people on into the future. The standing, number two, the standing committee of the People's Representative Assembly of Cambodia, Chairman Comrade Noon, First Deputy Comrade Pim, Second Deputy Comrade Mok. Then below that, uh, on the appointment of the Presidium of State, Chairman Comrade Hem, First Deputy Chairman Pennot, on the government, uh, just looking at the uh, that section, the government, quote, must be totally an organization of the party directly of our state. The wish is for it to be strong, must have influence in the party, in the country, outside the country, with friendly countries and with enemies. The government appointments there are Comrade Paul as First Minister, Comrade Van as Deputy Prime Minister for Foreign Affairs, Comrade Vaughan, Deputy Prime Minister for Economics and Finance, and Comrade Q, Deputy Prime Minister for National Defence. If we start there with the last body, um, if you could tell us who those four individuals are, Comrade Paul. Uh, certainly. Um, just to, to preface, so it's interesting, I think it's amusing in a way that the Standing Committee of the General Assembly is also members of the Standing Committee of the CPK, this uh, uh, Tamok and Sapem and Nunchia. So you've almost. Anyway, the second one, uh, uh, first, uh, Paul is, uh, is Paul Plot, uh, Van is Yang Suri, uh, Vaughan is uh, Von Vet, and uh, Q is uh, Q Sampon. That's it, those four. I, j I just want to, for the avoidance of, of doubt, um, on that last one, Comrade Q. No, Q is uh, Son Sen, I'm sorry, no wrong. The defense, Q is Son, Son Sen. Uh, Q, Q, I'm sorry. Thank you. I just want to. No, no, you're, uh, my mistake. Avoid you being asked. Certainly, about certainly. In, in subsequent uh, mm. examination. Um, now, and chairman of the Presidium of State uh, indicated as Comrade Hem. Uh, who do you understand that to, to be? À votre avis, il s'agissait de qui? Yeah. If, if you could repeat your answer for the record. I'm sorry, Q Sampan. Were there any other uh, senior people that you are aware of based on your research in that group that we're looking at, or more broadly, um, within the CPK hierarchy, uh, who had the same um, alias, Hem? Not that I know of. That, that's the name that he used. I think he admits it in his autobiography and so on. I think this is quite well known. <coughs> Thank you. Um, now, I, I will now return to that um, uh, document on the conference of the legislature that I mentioned earlier, E3-165. Um, we have, obviously, a Khmer version of that document. It is the original uh, version. Uh, and if that could be displayed on the screen, the ERN for this passage starts at... Zero 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 five three six three four. That was the Khmer ERN. The English ERN is zero zero one eight four zero six eight. And the French ERN zero zero three zero one three five four. Uh, that's the beginning of the of the section. Um, now this document is dated the. Uh, or reports uh, a conference held 
uh, on the 11th to the 13th of April 1976. I don't propose to, um, again, go through uh, names other than to um, perhaps just point to the uh, people that we're concerned with primarily. Um, it looks at the, or rather, the Assembly uh, approves the selection and appointment of the Presidium with uh, Comrade Q. Sampan as chairman. It then goes on to, uh, under heading six, to deal with the selection and appointment of the Government of Democratic Kampuchea. And there again we see Pol Pot, Ing Siri, Vaughan Vett and Son Sen in the positions that you uh, looked at earlier. And after that, there is um, an, an appointment of, or rather, a, a, an assignment of a number of uh, committees that are answerable to the Deputy Prime Minister for Economics, Vaughan Bett. Professor, what, if any, conclusions can be drawn from the fact that um, whilst the Assembly report indicates that the Assembly had detailed, had, had, had detailed discussions and decided on these matters on the 11th of, to the 13th of April 1976, um, given that, as we saw on the 30th of March, um, it appears appointments uh, along very similar lines were made by the standing, or rather the Central Committee. What, if any, conclusions can be drawn from, from that, from the, from the events as they're reported by the documents? I would say clearly that the uh, appointments were not made uh, as a result of discussions inside the Assembly. The decisions were made as if this Assembly meeting really did go on for that period of time. The uh, appointments were made, uh, no, the appointments were ones that were agreed on by the Assembly having been presented to them by higher ups. That's the way it worked. It wasn't, they didn't push the proposals up, the proposals came down toward them. That's the significance of, the, of your two, your two dates. It's an interesting way of looking at it. 30, 30, uh, here's what's going to happen, and then they say something else happened. It's not. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. It is now appropriate for us to take a short break. We will break until 3 o'clock. Court officer is now instructed to accommodate the experts and return him to this courtroom at three o'clock. The court is adjourned. All rise.